Black Cherry Zevia. This is a new one for me. Oh, it just makes me burp so much. I really don't know how they do it. Do you ever just have these moments where you're like, I don't understand how the world works. Like whenever I talk on my cell phone or I'm on FaceTime, I'm like, how, how is this happening? I don't understand. I took physics. I don't understand how this is working. I don't get it. Same thing applies to flavor. What is flavor? What is taste? Like, I don't understand how this clear liquid can taste like black cherries. You know what I mean? It doesn't make sense to me. It's just, I need like a how it's made video. LOL. Anyway, hi friends, welcome back. Listen, we're over halfway through Lanmas and I can hardly believe that the time is flying by and I have just been having so much fun. Dan and I both have been having so much fun with this Lanmas. I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of the love and for being here. I feel like we started off real hot and we've kind of lost our way with the morning uploads, try as we might. It can get a little hectic and a little crazy, but we have just, it's felt a lot more fun and relaxed this year. I'm even having a lot more fun with it. And I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who is tuning in every day, watching the videos, checking back, leaving comments, and just sending so much love. We've truly been having the best time. And with that being said, honestly, I was getting ready. We have a couple of things to shoot today, naturally. Every day, every day is a busy day during Landmas, but I was getting ready and I thought, you know what? I just wanted to turn on the camera and have a little chat with you. A little midway, halfway point check-in, if you will. <laughs> so often I am either like, talking through a makeup look or I'm talking about something else that I don't often just get to sit and chat and have a good blab and honestly sometimes I just love listening to a good blab and I miss watching them and I wish that more people uploaded them you know just the the good old days of the little chats just hanging out with our friends here on the internet and I wanted to chat with you guys while I was getting ready so I actually wanted to speak specifically about ads and sponsorships because this is something that has been coming up a lot. Obviously we have been posting a lot of content. I'd say like in general for any influencer, any content creator who makes a living on the internet, everything like Black Friday and onwards is kind of our busiest time of the year. You know, the holidays in general, that's when a lot of the brands kind of kick up their campaigns and really push that dollar spend. And I feel like Every brand, even if they're not involved with influencers, everyone kind of tries a little bit to dip their toes into the whole Black Friday life. And so kind of like November into December for us anyway, is our most busy time. For sure, for sure, out of any other month during the year. So if you notice on top of our, our daily content here on YouTube, we've also been posting a lot on Instagram. And I'd say a lot more on Instagram. And Dan and I have actually been having so much fun with it. And we have had the opportunity to work on a lot of fun campaigns this year. And I say for us both in general, I'd say this is the busiest we've ever been in terms of like brand partnerships and working on campaigns. And you guys will have seen a lot of it if you follow me over on Instagram. And we've definitely been, I'm gonna use that for phrase again, flexing our shoot muscles a little bit more, but honestly, we have been doing a lot more like, I'm not even gonna use the word editorial, but we've been doing a lot more shoots, like a lot more photos and whatnot. And we had a lot of them lined up and planned heading into Landmas. Some of the things came up kind of last minute and we were able to squeeze them in. But in general, we are both so proud and have been really excited to be doing the shoots. I'm so sorry, I feel like the camera's losing focus. I gotta just keep checking the viewfinder because they're, it's pooping on me these days. I don't know what's going on, but I'm trying to keep it in focus. I don't know what's... Anyway, as I was saying, uh, we've both been very proud of the campaigns that we've been working on and I wanted to kind of talk about it because it's not something I talk about a lot on my channel. I don't really talk about like the behind the scenes of sponsorships and ads and brand campaigns and all that and it's definitely something that gets commented on the most in the internet space, you know, how evil influencers are and how we get paid in our sponsorships and I do feel like the majority of you get it and you understand how it works. I think for a lot of people it can be confusing and it's kind of nice to sit and chat about it every once in a while. So I kind of wanted to talk to you about a few of the campaigns that we've been doing and kind of describe it to you from my POV and just have a little honest chat with you about sponsorships and how we work and how the channel works and all that good stuff. And I'm gonna do that while I do my makeup, so bear with me. Oh dear, it is so hard for me to stay on track while I am talking and doing my makeup, but I'm gonna do my best. So first of all, in my opinion, in my personal experience on the internet, there are two types of content creators. I'm gonna refer to us as content creators, okay? Because I really do hate the term influencers. It just doesn't sit well with me. It has this kind of bad connotation or this bad assumption associated with it. It's like I'm influencing you into evil things and to buy things against your will. It's like, mm, 
Uh, I'm gonna go with content creator. So for content creators, in my opinion, there are two types of content creators that exist. And I'm gonna kind of use YouTube as the main example. And those are content creators who get their income from their following. And there are the content creators who get their income from external sources. So I consider myself a content creator who gets my income from external sources, i.e. brands and sponsorships and endorsements and working on campaigns and content creating for places around the internet. And the content creators on that other side who get their income from their following use things like websites like Patreon. I guess a lot of people use OnlyFans and that's not necessarily only for the other uses of OnlyFans. I think a lot of people use it in a PG manner, I think. I don't know. I see a lot of uh, the ASMR people that I follow because I love ASMR. I love falling asleep to ASMR. It gives me the tingles and absolutely knocks me out. And a lot of the ASMR channels that I follow actually use Patreon heavily. And they also, from what I gather, I don't think this is available in Canada, but a lot of the TikTokers who stream and they go live with ASMR, you can like give money. I don't really understand how it works with the TikTok gifts, but you can like get money and people who are following and watching you live can send you gifts in a monetary format and different gifts have different value. And I don't really understand how that works because again, I don't do that kind of thing. I don't live stream. I don't really use TikTok in that way. And I also don't think that TikTok is monetized in the same way for Canadian creators. So anyway, they use things like that. And one thing that I've noticed lately, YouTube itself has actually really, really been pushing this a lot. And it's something like every time I get the email, I'm like, no, I'm not interested. Thank you so much. And they're constantly like set up a call. We wanna teach you about super thanks. And there's so many different ways on the YouTube platform itself that you can generate income from your subscribers. You can do super things, you can have memberships, you can have different subscriptions and you can give extra content kind of in the same way that Patreon does where your subscribers and your viewers can pay a fee and then they get access to whatever you wanna to offer to them. So whether that be extra content, more videos, specific videos, you can show them videos before anyone else. And that's just something that's never really interested me because in my personal opinion, even though that can be so effective for so many channels like ASMR where <laughs> there isn't really an easy other way for them to make money. I've definitely been seeing a lot more brand sponsorships pop up within the videos and a lot of ASMR people will like speak through or do a read through of an ad before they start the video um, and that's great but I, I think it is a good way for them to generate that income but for me here I always kind of was of the belief that I never wanted to ask you for money, <laughs> especially in a world where there's so many other opportunities and like exciting campaigns and brand partnerships that we can build and have on the channel. And there's also like affiliate marketing through linking. Not every link is an affiliate link, but that's definitely an external source of income that is available to content creators. And yeah, it's just interesting because the platforms really push it. Like YouTube is really pushing the super thanks. Like you want to get income from your subscribers. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's just not what I'm interested in. And I'm actually really curious to hear what you guys think because so often I see other channels and I noticed that just a lot over the years, uh, definitely depending on the genre and the niche that you were in on YouTube, sponsors are like really, really celebrated. And they'll be like, oh guys, today we got a sponsor and thanks so much to today's sponsor. And people are kind of shameless about it. And so often I'll be watching a random video, like I'll be watching the history of Greek mythology or something, whatever, it'll be a random video. And it's like, they're in the middle of a sentence and then they just cut to the ad and it's like, and today's sponsor is BetterHelp. And it's so often and just a randomly placed ad read being on my side who works a lot with the brands and the sponsorships and partnerships and whatnot. And just to hear that, I'm like, huh, they didn't even attempt to organically do it. They just like plopped in like a podcast. Podcast is very much the same thing. It's like, here's a podcast episode that you're listening to. And I'm going to sit and read 20 different ad reads for our 20 different sponsors for today's episode. And it doesn't even necessarily relate to the content that is in that episode or in the video that you're watching, but it's kind of just this understood, accepted thing that they're are brand sponsors and they are the money that is driving the channel and allowing that content to be available at no direct cost for the viewer. But then for whatever reason in the beauty space, this is definitely heavily monitored and heavily attacked. I'm gonna use the word attacked because I think in a lot of cases in the beauty space, in the kind of corner of the internet that I have lived in for all of these years, uh, it's usually under the assumption that an ad is a bad thing. And I've kind of, I've never really understood that. I do understand that there are people who are 
not genuine about the ads and the endorsements that they're taking. They don't use the products that they are featuring. And I understand where that comes from, but I kind of never understood that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I gotta, gotta pause to spray here. <clears throat> because most of the time, especially in recent years, uh, we've been working with less and less brands. The brands that we've been working with have been continuous, loving relationships, long-term partnerships, using products that I already use and love, or having the opportunity to try products before they get released. Products that are just organic and they fit into my life and I love them. And there's also very few and far between. I'd say as a whole, we don't do a lot of ads in comparison to the number of like ads and brand partnerships that we turn down there's definitely not a whole lot in comparison to what there could be and again around the holiday season there's definitely just a lot more and i'd say something that's interesting that we have tried to do over the years tried and failed is a lot of the brands like from the marketing perspective and from their side at the start of the year they talk about their budgets they set their budgets in place for the year they have their product launches or campaigns that they're working on at the start of the year and they plan out their year and their marketing plan and their budget accordingly and so often in the past we've been like okay we're setting up our video content we love this brand we love working with this brand hey brand would you like to be a brand partner in this video and most of the time they're like no thanks we've already got our content calendar we've already got our budget for the year and every once in a while it works out if you have an ongoing relationship with a brand and they know that you use and love a product already they might go to you to be like hey do you have any upcoming content that this could be a fit for or other times you can be like oh my god I am so obsessed with this product talk about it absolutely endlessly and then when the brand reaches out to do a feature you're like well this is perfect I'm already obsessed with this pattern and thank you so much for recognizing that sometimes it can be so so organic and easy and a great fit and the brand partnership continues as such but when you have the relationships with the brands most of the time you can kind of get an idea of what they're gonna be working on and see if it's a good fit for the content that you're gonna be creating now on the other hand something that's been really exciting that Dan and I haven't done a whole lot of uh, in the past but there's definitely been a few times where we've been approached with the opportunity and that is to create the content for the brands like on the brand side for their use and one of the examples that immediately comes to mind is when we actually worked with Bite Beauty, RIP. <laughs> And we created their how-to videos for their Sephora landing page. And that was such an exciting campaign. And it wasn't necessarily something that I had to post about. I didn't have any deliverables in that campaign, but it's a product that I got to try beforehand, ended up obviously loving it and falling in love with it. And then we got to create the content that the brand was using on their end for their pages and their education. And that was really exciting. But there's a lot of cool different opportunities like that. And recently, actually, a lot of brands have been wanting to kind of like you do a post and then they boost it from their end on the back end. So for example, the recent campaign that we did with Peloton, which was so exciting and it was such a perfectly timed thing because we had already been planning our Hawker Winter Series and then Peloton reached out. I absolutely gagged. I positively passed away inside because I have been a purchaser and user, a customer of Peloton for years. And when they reached out, I was like, this, this couldn't be better timing. This is so, so harmonious with the content that we already have going up and we got to include them in our Hawker or winter series and then from their end they're boosting that as an ad so from the perspective from the brand influencer marketing has always been really interesting to me because the amount of money and the amount of jobs that already exist around content creation is huge anytime that you see a product coming out a brand working on a campaign you see a little billboard photo you see a little image in a magazine you're flipping through a magazine and there's hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of campaigns and images and it's kind of crazy to see the amount of work the amount of effort that goes behind every single one of those it's like you see one little 20 second commercial on tv or a 20 second commercial on youtube there's probably hundreds of thousands of dollars and a massive group of people working on that one little campaign to make that 20 second come to life I remember working on a shoot years and years and years ago. This was like one of the first campaigns I ever worked on. And we were doing a series of three videos for a brand's YouTube channel. And I don't know if I was the only one. I believe this was a one, maybe a three day shoot. So maybe they had two other content creators, but either way, we went with the brand and my task was to shoot three videos. It was three five minute videos for this brand. And they had rented this like massive, insane space. They had a stylist, they had a makeup artist like at least 20 people on the production side working on the lighting the cameras like the photos and the video they had a sound guy if not there might have been multiple sound guys and then not to mention the like marketing and the design team from the brand and then the agency who was putting the shoot on for the brand like there's 
there's so many people that work on every single little piece of content that you see from the brand side. So I always think of influencer marketing as actually a very <laughs> cost effective and time saving option for brands. And I think that's why it has been so lucrative for brands to use it. And it's been, I mean, it's become an entire career trajectory for thousands and like, I don't know how many thousands of people around the world. And in some way it's always existed. Even before social media, content creation always existed. There were always agencies. There's bajillions of agencies that exist solely for creating content for numerous brands and whatever campaigns that exist. Like it's a huge market and it employs so many people across all sectors. You know, it's a really funny one that comes to mind actually are stock photos. I always try to think of the entire agencies that are set up creating stock stock images and the models that are employed and the stylists and the makeup artists, the hairstylists, everyone who's involved in creating stock imagery for like random websites, like any little tech website. I would love to see a documentary on how stock images are made. That's that's something that would bring me a lot of entertainment actually. <laughs> this is such a vast subject and it's occurred to me that there are entire like university courses that have been developed on content creation and influencer marketing and there's just, you know, hours and hours that you could listen to about podcasts and there's so many different sectors and topics within the topic that we could discuss. But I, I think it's a really cool world and in a way it's always existed and we're just seeing it grow into different formats. And I personally, as a content content creator and also as a consumer, I really love the fact that an entire new career and a new piece of the internet has come from content creation and for the content creator space that I live in, in the beauty and lifestyle world. I've just always really appreciated that middleman between the consumer, the customer, and the brand and just finding the people that you love to follow and love to watch whose style you'd like to emulate and just having that direct connection opening those doors seeing behind the scenes of the world that was for so long very hidden to us and we never got to see the glimpse of the behind the scenes and that's the beautiful thing that social media has brought about that now there's a lot of things that social media has also destroyed a lot of things that were just peacefully existing and didn't need to be messed with and you know it's created this, this intensity for virality and overconsumption and I understand that there's a lot of kind of those areas where it can be a little bit tough to sit with and that's where I feel like you just have to be in control of the content that you are consuming online you have to be in control of the people that you're following and make sure that you trust them you trust their opinions you trust what they're Get really selling you really you have to trust what they're selling you and that can be where there's a little bit of a gray area where sometimes you're like is that is that true do you really believe that like i totally understand sometimes i'll be watching something i'll be like wow that's amazing and then it's like sponsored i'm like Ugh, well i don't follow this person i don't know if they're being honest so is this as good as they're saying or are they doing it just because they're sponsored so i do understand the hesitation when you do see that something is sponsored but <sighs> So feel like it just depends who who you're watching, who it's coming from. And on that note, I've also done a big blab about this before. I think it was in a recent video, but talking about kind of how <laughs> like sponsored things and product placement within traditional media has kind of it's ruined traditional media for me. Like I cannot watch a TV show or a movie or a music video or anything without picking out all of the very, very blatant and undisclosed paid for product placements that exist within traditional media and it drives me drives me crazy because I'm like, I know you do not use that. And it's different because a celebrity is famous for the work that they're doing. You know, a celebrity might be famous for being an actress or being a singer and you listen to their music or you watch their movies and the products are kind of like irrelevant. Like they can be a face of that brand, but they're not necessarily held to their opinion about that product that they are advertising or doing the campaigns for in general. Whereas content creators on YouTube and Instagram specifically, our following is built based on our opinion about the products. <laughs> so I guess it's just a little bit different. I have no outside outstanding talents. <laughs> I am not an actress. So I guess the overall general chat that I'm trying to have here is that content creation at its heart and as a whole has always existed. There are so many jobs that involve content creation and content creation on social media and working with brands, sponsorships, all those things. It's just, it depends on the individual. It depends on the content creator itself, but in that way, it has always existed in some form. This is just another form that it has taken. And I would say a much more honest and direct to consumer way than it has traditionally been done. So I personally love it and I absolutely 
love having the opportunity to work with the brands that I could have never dreamed of. Like the recent Dior campaign that we did for their li literally trunk of dreams. That was, that was a dream come true. Like if I ever have children and I look back on my work life and I show my kids my resume, I'm like, yeah, once upon a time, your daddy and I, we worked on a holiday campaign for Dior. We worked on a powder campaign for Givenchy. Like creating content for the brands that I use and love in my daily life and also these very aspirational heritage fashion houses like that is crazy to me that is something that i pinch myself absolutely every day i am so grateful to my community here on the internet for allowing me to have this as a job and i think a lot of the times people take it I don't want to I don't want to say this in a negative way, but I think people take it a little bit too seriously sometimes, whereas a lot of the times Dan and I look at it like there's two sides to this. There is the trusted opinion. These are the products that are amazing that work for me. This is great. And then there's also the opportunity to work on campaigns as a whole. So like the Dior Trunk of Dreams, for example, that was just a really fun campaign to be on. I am not sitting here being like, you absolutely need to buy this $6,000 <laughs> But the reality is, is that there is a customer for that. There is someone who would look at that and be like, wow, yeah, absolutely, I'm gonna buy that. And a friend of mine said to me once actually, and it's kind of sat with me for a while, and it said, if you can't afford something, then you are not the customer. And that sat with me because I think there's a lot of, in, in the influencer space, in this world of consumerism that we all exist in, there can be this really intense um, kind of keeping up with the Joneses comparison problem. I think that you are allowed to look at something and decide if it's for you or not, if it's the content for you or not, and also decide on if that's the life you want. I look at these massive mega mansions and here's my yacht and here's my 12 super fast cars and I'm like, I just don't, that's not something that I care about in my life and it's not something that I aspire to. Everybody has different dreams and different things that they aspire to and not everybody shares the same goals and visions and things that they want and things that they need and everybody's different, everybody's in a different situation and not all content is made for all. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna cut away from this real quick because one thing that I wanted to discuss, I recently commented on the fact that a lot of you guys were telling me that the NYX nude beige lip pencil was discontinued and I just about had a little heart attack there if I'm uh, completely honest. So I tried to order it from Ulta because I see it online at Ulta and fun fact, Ulta a while ago, a while ago stopped shipping to Canada, but I actually can't order online even to my PO box in the States because the billing address doesn't even give you the option to select Canada as your billing address for your credit card and also PayPal wasn't working. Like I just literally physically couldn't place an order on Alta and I didn't realize that. So lo and behold, we went to London Drugs and I picked up two just to be safe because if it is indeed being discontinued, I cannot verify that. Dear Nix, hello, please let us know. But it was still in store. It was still available to purchase and I got myself a fresh NYX Nude Beige. So a lot of you were like, oh my god, it's discontinued. They changed the color. And I'm like, I don't know which NYX Nude Beige you are looking at. But oftentimes, if you're in another country, I remember this with, um, has anyone been here long enough to remember? Maybelline Bad to the Bronze. <laughs> the little cream eyeshadow. And this was something that all beauty gurus, all beauty content creators on YouTube were obsessed with. We all talked about Maybelline Bad to the Bronze, but people in other countries had different names. I think in the UK, it was Maybelline On and On Bronze. And so they had different names and so even though it was the same shade they had different names so I don't know if it's one of those scenarios if NYX has a different shade name for this elsewhere or if they are indeed discontinuing it I don't know what to say to that but it's the same for me and the in-store shopping experience and fingers crossed that they absolutely do not get rid of this because it was $5.99 Canadian you cannot get a cheaper lip pencil that is this amazing and the formula is divine so there's my product plug for the day how about that speaking of product placement absolutely not sponsored, but guess what? If NYX was like, hey, we see that you use the NYX nude beige lip pencil in every single video, we'd love to work with you on a campaign. I'd be like, how perfect, how perfectly fitting and organic, dear NYX. I am ready and open for a conversation. <laughs> At the end of the day, I am so grateful and thankful to my community and also to our brand partners that work with us, keep the fun rolling here on YouTube. I am also so grateful every day to be here 
creating content for you, hopefully being a happy little part of your day, something fun for you to watch, something entertaining. I try to be entertaining and tie that in with also being helpful and educational and being that middleman between the product abundance that we have in the world and things that I particularly, it's like product curating, really. It's like, I here's a million things. Here's the things that I test out and try, pick out, and here's the things that work. Here's the things that I love. And also here's some fun and entertainment and just some life and some chats and it's a weird thing. It's a weird little parasocial relationship that we have here, isn't it? But it's a hoot and thank you for being here and for being a part of it. And with that, my friends, that's my makeup done. For the day, nothing too crazy. Road ribbon, the usual. Nude sticks, bareback blush on my face. And that's a little makeup look to take us through this very dark and dreary afternoon. If you didn't notice, I do have the lights on because winter. <laughs> I didn't take a single sip of my black cherry soda that entire time. I was too busy blabbing. <sighs> Come downstairs, I'm so sorry. It's so terribly dark and warm down here in this camera, but listen, I wanted to show you what today's Landmas giveaway is because we had actually, we had included this in an earlier video and it didn't make the cut for the video. So even though this might be very random for today's video and today's chat, uh, here it is nonetheless. The theme of today's giveaway box is my travel favorites box. And let me show you everything that's in here. First of all, when we ordered these online, they just came in a little cardboard bag. There was no like additional packaging or anything. So when I opened it, I was like, oh, that was the packaging. Anyway, a little away packing cubes. These are the packing cubes that Dan and I use. This is the color I have beige and here's a fresh set for you in case you wanted some for your travels and then I picked up some of my favorite kind of travel size travel inspired uh, things my vacation SPF this is such a fun I love the packaging of this it smells so good one of my favorite body SPFs to use and then I don't talk about this enough nor do I give it enough love but I had bought myself a refill of this and included one for you guys this is the Shiseido clear sunscreen stick I love to carry this around in my purse carry around in the car it's just easy to rub onto my hands or on my face when I'm on the go specifically like, more in the summer for sure if I'm like playing tennis outside and I want to throw this on my face it's an amazing stick it's non-irritating and I love it do not give that enough love and then a couple travel size things my benefit professional spray the Givenchy powder little travel size goodies you can take them away with you when you travel or if you don't travel you can carry them around in your purse whatever you want and then one of my favorite lip masks the Tatcha Kisu lip mask I love that it's just itty bitty itty bitty but a little lip mask for you because you need to stay hydrated when you're on the go uh, one of my favorite things to do when I am traveling when I'm on a plane is to mask especially if I'm doing a long haul travel day but if you're not traveling again you can just have this in general my beloved Shiseido sheet masks this one comes with the face mask and then also the chin strap lift these are a hoot they're hilarious I love them and they also feel so good on the skin so a big nice luxe pack of these for the giveaway and then we've also got some and Peter Thomas Roth under eye gels, <laughs> obviously to depuff. Love a good under eye patch, so those are included as well. Then also, I just tossed in my own little plug. I put my nude sticks beachy nudes kit in here, so you can just get some little pictures of me. Uh, but also <laughs> amazing travel size products to carry around with you on the go. I also put a very bougie, like one of my new favorite things that I have had in my life, and I wanted to give to you the Dior hand cream. What a, you know, what, I'm going to open this. I'm just going to open it and show you guys because what a glorious little package that is. Look at how pretty. You just feel like the spiciest little bougie lady pulling this out of your bag and I love to carry it around and it's one of my favorite things to keep with me on the go. So, got some more like practical travel things if you are traveling on a plane, if you're going overnight, you need to sleep. An eye mask is absolutely a must have for me. And we got two because the slip silk eye mask is very nice, very bougie, very soft and allegedly good for you. Uh, but we also love the Manta sleep mask. <laughs> and we picked one up for you as well. So depending on what kind of sleeping mask you are, it's just sleep is so important isn't it? Sleep is king. So just block out the light, block out the haters and get some shut eye. For some other travel goods this year, we became Kindle people, my friends. And what a magical treat it was having that while I'm traveling and going away and I want to read multiple books. It's just so nice to have on the go. If you commute to work, you take public transit and you just want some entertainment while you're on the go. Uh, the Kindle really just kind of changed my life this year. And I have not been reading. Oh my God, the last couple months, I haven't touched a book. I've been trying to get through Murtag, <laughs> but believe you me, when I'm traveling, this Kindle is coming with me. So I wanted to pick one up for you. This is the paper, I forgot. I thought it was paper white, paper white. 
what's it called? Anyway, whatever the one I had, it was paper something. I bought it on Amazon and I bought you guys one too. And then, so you could buy some books. I also got a little Amazon. I think this is the Kindle. It should be the e-store. Listen, if I bought it wrong, you can just tell me, but also got a gift card so you can buy books to put on your Kindle. So that's going in there. Travel necessity for sure. Must be entertained at all times. And speaking of being entertained at all times, I, even though I've been having my own issues with my AirPods that broke, they were a beautiful part of my life for many years and I do need to get a lovely new pair. But just in the light of being entertained while traveling and listening to music and watching TV shows and doing whatever, also got you guys a fresh pair of AirPods Pro because these are my personal favorites. I like the marshmallows, I like the noise canceling, I like the comfort of it, it's very nice. And we got a fresh pair for you in here to where, wherever you're traveling, whether it's just your daily needs being on the go or whether you are traveling on a plane, planes, trains, and automobiles, you can have your AirPods on hand. And then to put everything into a bag, uh, this year one of the new pieces that I had got for my travel life was the base bag. Can I open this to show you? No, I won't. I'll go grab mine. I won't be lazy. Hold on. Here's the bag. <laughs> and would you look at that? My little slip eye mask is in here from the last time I traveled with it because I literally, I put this on. Neck pillow, earplugs. I am out like a light. This is the base travel bag. This is amazing because it has the little pocket back here where if you're doing long haul traveling, you're bringing a carry on with you, it can just slide over the handles and that is so much more comfortable for travel. But if you're also not traveling, you can zip this up and just use it as a pocket and this is the perfect everyday bag. It's so roomy, it has a laptop sleeve and it has these giant pockets where you can throw your water bottles, your passports, you could put shoes in there. It's honestly been such a fabulous Fabulous travel bag, so I wanted to pick one up for you guys. And that is everything that is in this travel bundle. All of these goodies will be going to one of you. Please check the description box down below to see how you can enter to win. I hope you love today's giveaway. Thank you so much for being here and for having a chat with me today. And if you want me to keep doing more of these, I would love to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments down below any other topics you want me to cover. And until then, good luck to everyone who enters the giveaway. I love you all so much and I'll see you all tomorrow for a new Landmas video. Bye!